couple other seats over here if you want to sit down. We'll need to open up uh, the entire room next time, I guess. Um, we, are, we are sitting up here no, typically at these constituent meetings. Uh, we just walk around, uh, but there was a couple people uh, in uh, Commissioner Hart and Commissioner Siegel's ward who asked if we could tape this. Um, so because of that, uh, to have it come up, we have to use microphones. Um, so that's why we're sitting up here. Uh, but we do want this to be an informal setting. Uh, each of us will probably touch on a couple of topics, uh, but we want to answer as many questions and concerns as possible. Uh, so we thank you for coming. First, uh, just to have everybody introduce ourselves, uh, walking out of the room now is <laughs> our, our acting township manager, Amy Cuthbertson, and our director of codes, Joe Celia. Uh, she did to my right here is Deputy Chief Joe Hagan uh, to represent the police to answer any questions we have regarding police or traffic. Uh, trying to get a couple more chairs over here. Uh, seated to my left is the fourth ward commissioner, Dan Siegel. My right, uh, eighth ward commissioner, Dr. Gary Hart. Uh, and my name is Kevin McCluskey. I am the commissioner for the third ward. Uh, what we think we're going to do is uh, each of us are just going to touch on a couple of topics that many people uh, have been asking questions about, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, so in the third ward, uh, there is a scheduled construction of the Ardmore Avenue Bridge. Uh, we are having a meeting that will be dedicated strictly to that with PennDOT officials. It is a PennDOT project. We will have PennDOT officials and contractors here the night of April 10th. We we'll also have representatives of the police there to discuss the detours and traffic patterns that will result from that. Uh, obviously, I, I've talked to and heard from a number of people in the Marion Gulf Manor neighborhood uh, and along Burwood Drive and Hathaway Lane uh, about concerns of cut through traffic or just detoured traffic. Uh, we have done traffic studies in advance of this project and we would be able to report on them. But we're also planning as soon as the construction starts. We've been told by PennDOT um, that lessons have been learned from the College Avenue Bridge project. So, so the construction will not start until uh, the aerial wires along the train tracks are moved. Uh, that was a large holdup last time. Uh, so once those are moved, we have in place uh, a plan whereby we're going to have, uh, so that once the project starts, there'll be extra police presence in the neighborhood, there'll be some additional signage, all to help control and make sure that the, uh, the, the, the impact on the neighboring uh, communities is as minimal as possible. Um, I would encourage anybody who has questions about this or concerns in advance to come to the April 10th meeting. Uh, as I said, we'll have the contractors there, the PennDOT officials, uh, and the police all at that meeting. It's April 10th at 7 o'clock. Um, the other thing I would like to bring up, obviously, that we'll have some, uh, we'll have questions and answers, and I'll probably talk additionally then. But uh, I am, I, I do serve on the committee for health and wellness in the township here, and Hereford Alliance for Drug Awareness is having their annual uh, comedy event. And given that we have such a crowd tonight, I, I just want to hopefully make you all aware that that is April 13th at 7:30 at Trinity Christian Church on Mill Road. Um, it's a great cause and a good fundraiser, and, and one uh, hopefully you will consider attending. Um, there's lots of advertisement online. Uh, and I will turn it over to uh, one of my other commissioners. They want to make an introductory remark. Oh, uh, just to Lisa, <laughs> District Justice Lisa Lacianco is, uh, is seated to three to my left. I usually come, but I usually sit in the audience because I rarely have anything to say, but I'm happy to say. You need, if you, you have to hit the button. She's never been up here. She doesn't know about the microphones. I do know about the microphones in court, but these are a little bit different, um, although similar. I said I usually come to the meetings and I usually sit in the audience because as a resident, I like to know what's going on. As a judge, I don't usually have comment on most issues, but lack of seating and the nature of public officialness, here I am. Thank you. I will be brief because there are more people in this room than I think in all of my constituent meetings for over 10 years combined. So either there's some hot topic I don't know about, other than Eagle Road and Darby Road, which are being repaved this year, we are told they are. Um, <clears throat> of, we'll talk about that. Yeah. 
But no, seriously, they are being repaved. I can tell you that probably half of the communications I have gotten in the last three months relate to those roads. They are state roads. We can't pave them. We can't fix a pothole. Uh, but we did. There was a meeting last year uh, with uh, State Rep. Vitale, Commissioner McCluskey, and others. And as a result of that meeting, the repaving was pushed up from 2023 to 2019. So, you know, it is, we've, we've been working on it. I will also talk and explain what's going on with the Blue Route, but since this is really a night for you to ask questions, at this point, I'll just let Jerry make some introductory remarks, then we'll open it up uh, for questions and see why we have so many people. <laughs> I think it's the eighth floor. It's great to have so many people here. Um, just two things that, and usually the 8th Ward's kind of the sleepy corner of the township, but we have a lot potentially going on. Um, uh, as far as the Brookline School, I'm going to just give you a brief, not everybody knows sort of the history of what's gone on, so let me just fill you in and get you up to date to where we are. Uh, January 2018, we had a meeting with the school board about something else and learned that they were planning on selling the Brookline School, that they had no, um, it was costing them a lot of money to run and they had no use for it long term. We came out of the meeting and thought we were almost in the process of um, going ahead with the um, renovation of the library, um, which we're going to um, commit six and a half to seven million dollars to, but the library would continue to only have 16 parking places. So we felt that the Brookline School at least deserved um, a look for a potential, um, potential new library to be built there. Uh, it took wheels move slowly. Um, it, it has taken about a year. We've had a, a good um, interaction with the um, school district, and the school district agreed to um, transfer the property to us rather than uh, putting it up for sale. Um, I know people, there are issues of um, child care. Um, it's also the, been the senior center. Unfortunately, those were the school district was going to close the building no matter what happened. And so those were issues that we just didn't have any control of. And we, the building is in very poor condition. Uh, we were not going to be able to, the tenants were not going to be able to stay there long term. So I, they, were made aware last summer that the plan was that the building would close at the end of June. Um, and that's still what's going to happen. Um, in the, as far as the library, the township has this, two things will happen with the Brookline School. Either um, the, we'll, the library may move there, or if the library doesn't move there, the building will come down and it will be open space. Um, we're waiting for the library is, um, has reconsulted their architect. They're in the process of coming up with a proposal, which probably will still be about another month before it's out. Um, and at that time, I expect that we'll have a number of um, open meetings to discuss the proposal to get feedback. Um, I don't, don't, we don't know what the cost would be. Um, the cost would undoubtedly be more than to renovate the current site, but again, we can find that out in about a month. Um, I'll certainly keep you updated as to um, where and when those meetings will be, um, but that, that's where things stand with that at the present time. Um, and then just the, the other big, uh, the Manoa, Manoa Road is going to be, um, Close, the bridge on Manoa Road is, is going to be uh, coming down, uh, and the project is going to start, we just learned, April 8th. Um, I don't think the bridge, um, most likely the road will not close immediately, that there is going to be a reconfiguration of old Manoa Road, and I think they'll probably do that work first, and, but once that's done, then the bridge will close. They are anticipating that the bridge will be um, reopened, the new bridge will be open in mid to late October. Um, 
I know there's a lot of concerns as with the Ardmore area bridge about cut-throughs and about detours. Um, and for that, I'm gonna hand things over to Deputy Chief. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, recently uh, we had a meeting with PennDOT. They are projecting possibly in the area of April 8th as the beginning of the construction. The initial plan is to reconfiguring the um, inner curbing around, there could be a new cutout from Old Manila Road onto Manila Road. That's the beginning phase of the project. They've been down there doing tree work and uh, utility work. So once they do the full closure of the bridge, the detour will be um, half a road to Arlington, well, I'm sorry, to Township Line to Arlington. Um, at that point, we once the closure goes into place, you'll see the police will um, increase definite patrols in the area, uh, doing traffic enforcement on all the side streets in that area. Um, we can rest assured that in the first couple of weeks, people don't know where they're going. They'll come down the road, they'll ignore the signs. After at the first couple of weeks, usually things fall into place. We know from our experience when we had the College Avenue Bridge shut down, it was the same thing. Uh, people in the first couple of days, they try to look for the easy outs, then they start realizing that the de detour is there for a reason. To get you the quickest uh, route to the next uh, area that you're trying to get around to. So um, we, you definitely will see us down there and we will definitely be doing a lot of traffic enforcement. Be forewarned, a lot of times when we are doing traffic enforcement in that area, we get the residents in that area too. We'll be sitting on stop signs, checking for speeds, um, and any other traffic issue may come up at that point. But PennDOT will be out posting the detour routes. Um, they should be probably going out next week. The signs usually go up announcing the detour two weeks prior to the detour going in effect. So we'll be uh, seeing that occur. Anything else? So, so at this point, as uh, Commissioner Siegel mentioned, there, there's a large crowd here. We want to make sure anybody who has a question or concern and wants to ask a question uh, can. Um, as I said, we are trying to videotape this for any resident that can't be here. So uh, if you, Commissioner Siegel can hand you the mic or you can come up to the lectern if you want, um, whatever your preference. Anyone? The, okay, it is working. Or we could just keep talking if nobody has questions. Yeah. <laughs> Happy. I, I have some filler. Lawyers, we talk. Sir. Hi. George Wilson, 1007 Large Mile. So. Are they rebuilding the bridge completely or just kind of patching and repairing? No, they're actually replacing that bridge. It's a lot of people may misunderstand. Like we've had questions. They think it's the septa line bridge that's being repaired. It's the bridge that's past Caracon Drive. Right, right. Okay. So it's, it's a very, very old bridge that runs over the creek and is in very bad shape. So it's a, 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 a pressing project that they have to get done. And then they're going to reconfigure Old Manel Road, if you're familiar with Old Manel yeah. Road, the one that loops around. They're going to reconfigure that to where the out is coming out directly across the street from Caracon Drive. Just don't have them detour down my street, Arch. Uh, they will not, they should not be able, you own Old Manel, they shouldn't be able to get down Old Manel. Perfect. So. Hi, Tara Von Andre. Hi, Hi Terry. I don't know if that's <laughs> You have to talk a little closer. Hi, we, uh, there's a couple folks from the neighborhood here. We live on Farwood Road, many of us in the 300 block. Um, one side of our road is a bunch of shared driveways as they are through a lot of the township. Um, as a result, there's a lot of street parking um, that we use, a lot of two car families. Um, we also don't have sidewalks in our neighborhood. We have a blind curve that goes around by the Farwood tot lot. And there's, as you know, a few bus stops. I think you guys are ticketing down there on a regular basis now. And the concern is, is that there's about 10 parking spots on Manoa near Karakung, and then there's a bunch on Old Manoa Road. And as you do the construction, I think the natural result, and we're already seeing it down around the um, area closest to Manoa, commuters are starting to park on our street um, because it's the closest available street that doesn't have any permit parking signs. And so I think I understand what you're saying about addressing the cut through traffic and I believe that'll be addressed. I don't see how anyone here is currently addressing the parking situation. So I'd like to inquire about that. Um, I'll address the parking situation on Manoa Road. I believe, and I can't give you 100% correct answer on this, that we believe that they're gonna leave those parking spaces open on Manoa Road so they won't, won't be losing them. Because the detour will go all the way down. Technically, Manoa Road or Caracon Drive is gonna be the last out 
for all the people who want to drive past the road close signs. So Caracon Drive will be open. So we believe that the parking spots there will be still open for commuters to park. In reference to parking on the um, side streets for commu commuters going currently, that is always a hot button top at the commissioner's meeting where um, if we start limiting parking, is pushing it back, back, and back to all the other streets. And the commissioners may be able to address that a little bit more. It, it's come up at different meetings, and uh, they're trying to come to a resolution for you know uh, parking. I believe they're ex exploring more parking spots in, on the area of uh, Mill and Caracon to give more access to parking in that area. So we're, we're working together with SEP and the township, and we're all uh, trying to get more parking and set a premium down. At the, everyone wants to commute and you know save gas and save the environment, but some of the residuals that people aren't walking to the train station or driving and parking their cars at. So. And there's, I mean, there's a significant impact. It's not just Farwood. Um, typically, when I moved to Penfield, there were maybe two or three cars. Um, it's gotten up to where just 12, and today there were 25 cars. Lawson used to have about 15 cars and now has 30 cars. So the problem is, again, people use the train, and I don't want to discourage them from using the train, but it, it just, we, in the past, a number of streets have had restricted parking, which has moved the parking just to another street. And I, I don't think that's a good solution to the to the problem um, I think you know with the enforcement uh, I, we get through the summer I mean one of the good things is that there are fewer during the summer there's people fewer people using the train uh, there's a lot of vacations usually there's some job but so at least June July and August should be more tolerable um, and we're hopeful that we can use, still use some of that parking on Manoa and Old Manoa. And, and we're not going to be able to use Old Manoa when they do the reconstruction, but then that should open up again. So. And, and just if, if I could add, I mean, I think everyone on the board, um, not just Dr. Hart, recognizes that, that that's an issue, particularly at the Penfield Station, but it's, it's the entire length of 100. Um, down to Beachwood Brookline, down to Ardmore Junction and Ardmore Avenue. Uh, and we, we had applied for a grant, and there's going to be an additional 20 parking spots. Yeah, we're hopeful, but that's at the Beachwood. But again, it's not going to help this summer. Uh, uh, and so we are actively looking for potential solutions and space that could be used uh, to house those commuters to both you know, take advantage of our, our position and location in terms of an inner ring suburb that has easy access to the city for people buying houses, because that's part of why people want to buy our houses. They can uh, they can get to their jobs quickly and easily via public transportation. Um, but as that increases, we're now facing problems where those lots are entirely full and people are moving onto the side streets. It's happening in, in the third ward on, on some of the streets right near Armour Junction and between Armour Junction and Armour Avenue. And, and we're, we're conscious of that and we're applying for grants um, and hopeful, hopeful to find uh, resources to you know, come up with some creative solutions for that. And it's been just as a practical matter. If you watch our meetings, whenever the parking comes up, you will see some heated discussion um, because there are varying constituencies People in the fourth ward are among the people who drive to the eighth ward or to the third ward and need those parking so that they don't have to commute into town. So it's a tension. It's, it's essentially neighbor again, uh, with neighbor, and it's not an easy solution. No one's been able to. We've, you know, we've been working with other agencies, and still so far, there's no simple solution, but it's typically people in one area who don't have, who can't, who are too far to walk, let's say, to the Route 100, who want to go. So we're working on it, uh, but it's, it's not an easy solution. Um, you know, when houses have three and four cars and three, multiple people. Yeah, I have one question here, then we'll go. I know you Hi, I'm Gwen Bland. I live at Cedarbrook and Darby. I have two questions and a comment. You said that Darby Road is going to be paved. When is that happening? So, is that before or after Ardmore Avenue is closed? So, <laughs> so the the paving the paving project for Darby Road, um, it, it's a PennDOT project. As 
Commissioner Siegel said it's we, we, we convinced them to move it up from 2023 to 2019. Um, it'll happen when the weather breaks. They've already been out measuring. I, I, okay. We don't have a date from them yet. The, the paving process is very quick. So theoretically, they can cull the road and pave it within three days. Um, so we're not in any way going to ask them to stop that because it also doesn't block traffic besides for when they're paving. And we want it paved. So Eagle and Darby, were, we, we have asked them and requested that it's as soon as possible. And as a follow-up to that, um, during the U.S. Open, we, we were dealing with parking issues, and we were talking then about possibly having just one side of the street for parking, because those are narrow streets in Marion Golf Manor, and I didn't know if that was up for discussion when Ardmore Avenue is closed. On Cedarbrook? On all the streets oh. in Marion Golf, because right now people park on both sides. Um, and only one car can get through at a time. Yeah. Um, one of the things that we've found when you start taking away parking on some of these side streets, it speeds up traffic. Those uh, cars being parked on both sides of the street actually slow down traffic. It acts as a traffic calming device. Um, the concern, I know there's a big concern about the cut through traffic going through Marion Golf Manor. They're not gonna be able to get out anywhere. So they're not gonna be able to figure out, like after the first week or two, people start making the cut down the street and then realize I'm getting back out to Armour Avenue. Guess what? I got to go back up the other way towards Darby Road. So um, as anything else w with the bridge closures, uh, Manoa Road, the first couple of weeks are always the toughest. Uh, we're always out there in full force to make sure there are no problems or any issues. And if any issues arise, we'll, we'll address them. And historically, when PennDOT has done paving of major roads like Ellis, they have done it at night, which is, yes. according to Ms. Cuthbertson, still the plan. Um, so. Hi, I'm Jane Horowitz, and I live on Old Manoa Road. <laughs> is anybody else here from Old Manoa, or are we the only? Uh, this is my husband, Richard. But um, we, we had an earlier meeting about what was going to transpire in terms of the bridges, so we were kind of aware of what was going on. But um, one of the other things, aside from the parking issue, which we are concerned about, is safety as it pertains to cars that come under the Route 100 very quickly and are now going to turn really quickly into our street such that you really, I take the Route 100 to work, we have one car, and every morning when I go across that street, unless I, and I usually use the crosswalk, you know, people are literally taking their lives into their own hands. I, I'm good, I'll be able to hopefully give you some peace of mind with that. At the end of your street, there are gonna be ballards. They're, um, they, they're orange, like almost like look like concrete little mini fences. They're gonna be at the end of the street, so it's gonna prevent a lot of traffic from going down there. They're not gonna come barreling down. If they are, they're gonna hit right into those ballards. Those ballards are gonna be in place. You're gonna be able to get through. Um, fire trucks will be able to get through, yeah. but the regular vehicles will not. Um, once that road closes, the traffic is going to diminish. You're talking, um, the studies are 6,400 cars a, a day come down that road. That's all day, 24 hours. So you're, once the um, detours go in effect and the signage go up, you're going to have a, a significant de decrease in that, like you'll be lucky if you get 300 cars a day coming down because most people will see those signs and obey those signs. Some people don't. They don't think the signs and, apply. And the other crucial question, because we had sort of gotten assurance about this, is that our street would become one way, which it should be as it is. I can't give you an answer to that. I'm not aware of that. So. Hey, Rich Gallo. Uh, I live on Country Club Lane. I'm here with my mom who lives on Erlington. Uh, once Manoa Road's close, is that, do you think that's going to increase traffic on Erlington Road by a lot? Because it's, it's, that's like a racetrack, too, already, as, as you probably know, I'm sure. Um, it will increase traffic because it is the detour route because all the vehicles, the, the 6,400 cars coming down Manila Road on a daily basis have to go follow the detour route. Okay. So you are going to see an increase. We'll, we'll also be out there enforcing the speed. Um, it, you don't know. We're usually sitting there in the 300 block of Arlington Road. Yeah, my mom's, my mom's at four, the 400 block right on the corner. And I know sometimes you park right on Arlington, right there, Arlington and Devon and kind of... At, 60 miles an hour instead of 25. Um, we have the traffic studies, ma'am. Occasionally a car will go 60 miles per hour, but the, 
the cars on average are in the area 35 miles per hour from our yeah. traffic studies. I know one time um, you, you guys stopped one of my mom's neighbors who lives on Arlington. It's like, you're, you're on your own street speed right. and you're complaining about but it. But we, we'll be out there also on the detour routes, enforcing traffic, Route 1, uh, Arlington Road. Anywhere where the detours affect, we will enforce traffic there. Okay, good deal. And once once the Brookline School, um, I talked to Dr. Hart about this before too. Um, will there be updates when we can find out when the meetings are coming up? Once yeah, I, um, if you're not, um, there'll probably be a number of ways. I mean, if you're not already on my email list, um, I will definitely send something out. Um, I put things on Facebook, and I think this will probably be more of a township a couple of township wide meetings, so that should be a lot of publicity about that. I'll sign. I'm and, for you. She email, but I'll sign her up for you. So. And okay. some background on the process with the Brookline School. It goes through, we have a committee system for the board. I chair the property, Township Property Committee. We are currently looking at options on the property in terms of cost. Our meetings are, are not public because they're real estate matters. But we will then make reports, as I've already done to the board, and we do anticipate public meetings just as we did before this building was built. So it, we, we will have those meetings, and I'm sure Dr. Hart will keep you informed as well. So you will be informed of what's going on, uh, but no decisions have been made. But the committee will make recommendations, and the board can do as, as it sees appropriate. And just as a little follow-up, I mean, I, I think that we need to make a decision this summer. Um, uh, it's The library has waited six years at this point, and so we, we want to have a direction of where we're going to go, and, and also we need to, we don't want to leave the building there unoccupied with no um, plan of what we're going to do. So uh, it, it should be shortly, but again, we have to wait for the library to come out with a, their proposal. But the first decision will be whether to, what to do with the building before we decide the property itself, which is library or park, essentially. Um. Uh, Barbara Goodwin, uh, Devon Road. Um, I just wanted to comment on the library. I've been a resident for over 40 years. I mean, the library, all I hear is summer after summer, the air conditioning breaks. Um, you know, you have to put more money into a building that doesn't seem to be very efficient. And of course, the parking, you can't even get near it half the time. So I would really want to see this township put the money into building a new library. And I like the Brookline um, school area because it's still a central part of the, the township. I don't want to see the library out at some fringe area. I don't know what other property we have here, where the old township building is. There aren't too many choices that I can see, and I would really want to see us do a good job. Did a beautiful job with this facility. We need to do the same with the library. There, there's no other property, ma'am. <laughs> <Just Where, laughs> where it is, where the Brookline is. Years ago, we did studies on properties part of the initial study. There are no alternatives. And candidly, if it were not for the cooperation of the school board and working with us, we wouldn't even have this option. The, the work or the cooperation with the school board has been dramatically improved over the years. Hi, I'm Ruth Furman from the 8th Ward. I live on Powder Mill Lane, so I just want to get a better understanding of the detour. When you said Manoa Road would be open, is it from <coughs> Earlington to Caracong? Not coming from Hannah. It's not technically. It's it's open, but it's going to be open to local traffic only. Is probably the way they'll post it. Um, there will be. You will not be able to get through at all, except for pedestrians. Will be able to get through back and forth to the train um, once they actually do a hard closure of that roadway. Because the bridge is right there at Powder Mill, so I yes. won't, So yes. we won't be able to turn onto Manila. No, you no. will not. So what will the detour be? Can you explain the that? The detour is half a road. The official detour from PennDOT is they can only detour traffic on state highways. So it will be half a road to Route 1, oh, okay. Route 1 to, to Arlington, Arlington So that's the official detour that's put out. Okay. Okay, and then I have a question about these 25 parking spaces. I'm concerned that you're going to use the green space in Ka on Caracong Drive. For um, the parking spaces. The plan, if we the get the current, the current ones. No, the no. no they said they're, they're, what they're we've getting, talked about oh, is the um, if uh, if we get the grant, there's a, a space if you go down Mill Road um, to Caracong, 
directly to your left um, that's owned by SEPTA between the power station and Mill Road. Um, there's a small plot. Right. SEPTA has agreed to give us the property. Um, so it, it would be on Karakung, but it would be, it's not a space that's being used. Um, so, it's on the other side of the creek. Yeah, it's not on the creek side. It's, uh, it's on the... It's on the other side. Oh, it's on the other side where that happens. Still, it does take place. It does take place in the region. Hi, I'm Jim Brady from the Fourth Ward. I have a question about the uh, Creck area on Parkview Drive. So um, the parking, there's a lot of parking at the Creck that people use for the athletic fields, and people park at the athletic fields in order to go to the Creck. There is not a safe pedestrian walkway across Parkview. In recent weeks, there's one sign up now that has a stick man, which is one way. There's no zebra crossing, and the stick man doesn't exist the other way. So is there a plan to deal with that to make it a legitimate pedestrian crossing? I can tell you that in response to those questions during the winter, I've talked with the township and the police, and we are going to be painting a crosswalk there, but we can't do it until the spring and all the winter road issues are done. But that I had talked to the township about um, that will connect across there. Yeah. There's next. Uh, I'm concerned about uh, the Brookline School. They have the senior center there now. What's going to happen to them? Because they're very concerned about that. Uh, uh, when it closes, I think in June or whatever, they don't have any place to go. They're, they've been looking. I'm, I've talked to their director um, several times over the last six months. I mean, they're actively looking for a place. I, I, it's they are a, they're a valuable resource to the township. They are a, not a government institution, so I mean we we can help them look for spaces, but we can't right. get them a space. I, I'm very I, concerned about that. Right, I, I'm, so we're that. hopeful that they can find place. Yeah, it's a valuable resource for the town. Okay. It, the issue is this: the building needs to close. I, I, we were very um, lucky that the heating system made it through this past winter, and it, it, to leave the building open, um, we're responsible for the tenants, and we just didn't feel that we could continue to do that. Hopefully they have a place for them. Yeah. Okay, next. Oh, I'm trying to. I'm, not I'm, not a, yeah. I'm Mike Gondek, uh, live on Farmwood yeah. Road. Uh, I've got a question about the contractor logistics, where they're gonna park their equipment and where the workers are going to park and how much disruption it will be and how many parking spots they'll take for their operations. I, I believe they're still working at, at the final logistics on that. Um, I think it's going to be minimum impact. I, I can't say for certain if they're going to drop a trailer down there somewhere on location, but what we do a lot of times is we actually work with them and find at, adequate parking for them. Um, if they have to like drop heavy equipment and yeah. stuff there. But there's going to be workers there. Right, but workers, right. They, they need to park there. Right. So, so I've I've been in. Do you want to make them have a central place to park elsewhere and have one? It's one possible. I mean, again, we're not we're not sure, but on on um, Karakung, there is this. We often use that space, uh, yeah. um, and I, my guess is that at least some of the equipment will be stored there. And. And also, PennDOT puts restrictions on them, what they can do, where they can drop equipment and leave equipment. Uh, I believe it's uh, 9 to 3. Okay. Monday through Friday. I believe so, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one last thing, well, that, well, not the same subject. Are they going to pay Karakun Drive at some time? Um, last year. Drive down there once and you got right. to um, Last year, <laughs> we, as Dr. Uh, Mr. Siegel mentioned, we had a meeting with PennDOT, um, and the three roads we prioritized were Darby, Eagle, and Karakon. Um, there's only with so much money in the budget, we felt as Darby and Eagle are used more by residents that they would be the priority roads, but we're still trying to get them to pave Karakon. I, I, we've I, active to. Uh, active discussions. Again, it's a state road, so it isn't something that. 
right? Yes. yes it's not a township road. If there's a road with problems in the township condition, it's normally a state <laughs> say, road, and we can't control it. We don't do anything. Um, invariably, if I get a complaint, and I'm sure you're the same, that the roads where there's complaints are all state roads. Um, we have, what, 30 bills to the state? It's, it's all, you, unfortunately, you know, the township, uh, while well, I You can try to send it to Ms. Cuthbertson out. can explain they, how much they do we're have spending. A claim. They have a claim website, actually. Yeah. But, um, I'll let Ms. Cuthbertson explain how much we're spending on roads this year for repaving, but they are all township roads, not state roads. We did. We committed $1.3 million of the monies we borrowed in 2018, and then we earmarked another 300000 So our budget for repaving our own roads is approximately one point six. Uh, we put the first um, group of them out to bid and got a very, uh, very favorable uh, quote from the bidding process. So we were able to put another slew of roads out to bid too. So we're actually going to be doing many more roads than we had originally anticipated. We're waiting for that second uh, bid to come in. So we have the price on the second. But like I said, um, due to the good pricing on the first, we're able to do a lot more than we had originally thought. First of all, I'd like to thank all you commissioners for recognizing me. I've been a resident taxpayer and homeowner in township for 60 years. I have never seen Eagle Road in such disarray as it is right now. It's already been addressed. I will not go any further with it. I know it's out of your hands, it's a state road, but you can certainly use your influence on the state, the pressure on the state. Having said that, my other concern, excuse me, I am a veteran, military veteran, and I'm sure there are others here in this audience. My two sons are military veterans. My grandson is a veteran served in, in Afghanistan. My son served in Iraq two tours. I am very proud of what you gentlemen have done erecting the signs along the streets here in Haverford Township. I appreciate that. But who in, who in this audience knows that those things exist? They're way up there among stores. I bet you there's a lot of them that don't know that exists. You're driving down the road, the streets, you can't read it because you're driving. <laughs> Lower them so you can see them and read them. Better yet, make another set of those signs and erect them at one of our township parks where you can go up there into that park and, and enjoy them and meditate. And that's it. All right. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, sir. Sir, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer your question. First, I want to say thank you for your service. Second, the reason why the signs are up so high is because of the vehicles driving by you, school buses, uh, tractor trailers, anything along those lines. If they're any lower, we'd be replacing them every day. And the reason why they put them up so high is, is the clearance for all the trucks. So. I, I I, I, I liked your idea of the park, sir. We can we can look into we can look into something where they're at a central location as well. Okay. Bardozzi. There's a there, if you look in the lobby right there, there's a poster board of them too. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> but we'll we'll work on the other stuff. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hi, Marcy Barrett. I live on Arlington Road as well. I'm near Manoa. I'm not too concerned with the bridge at this time, because but there's people that have parking issues I can understand. Um, my concern is the library issue. Um, you say that they started this, looking at this a uh, year ago in January, so we're into about now 14 months, the library. Well, that's not, 
we talked to the school district last, and we learned about that the school district was interested in, uh, was going to sell the, the uh, site in January 2018. We negotiated with them. They had to make a final decision about that. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, no apologies to I, Kevin, but lawyers are involved and it takes a lot more time. So we just, uh, but just, just to be clear, because the school district was a landlord at that property. Right. So the Surrey Center and there was a daycare and there's other facilities and that those leases went through June 30th of this year. So there was never a potential of us taking then. it okay. earlier. So, so I'm, I'm just really excited about this actually, because again, a lot of people like having a library being near the schools. I mean, it's not too far from the, the middle school and the high school. I mean, by moving where the, where the crack is, I mean, is, is it difficult, you know, for a lot of us in, in the eighth ward and the, with children that in the school district, which is right, you know, they did not move the schools to that area. So the kids are in on Mill Road and the schools are there and it'd be a great place to have a library, not too far where they can walk after school. I mean, when my daughter was in the schools, I mean, that was her place to go after school, um, you know, when she was, at, you know, 13, 14. So they, you know, there was opportunities. I mean, it's a great opportunity. I mean, and, and I'm sure you're going to move on. And I know I did see people complaining about the issue of the tech, um, the um, architecture. I don't think that should be an issue. But really, if you guys can get that moving, it'll help the seniors have a place to go. It'll give the kids a place to go, the child care a place to go. I'm sure it's built properly. I mean, the whole township would, would, would be thrilled with it. I think it'll enhance the value of the, have the homes in the, value, in, the, in the area. I mean, look, I'm, one thing I, I still you know, I'm, I'm upset about is we have no we have no pool. We don't have a township swimming pool. I mean, we have a beautiful township. We have a beautiful recreation center, and we have no swimming pool. I mean, I still can't figure out that. So, if, if nothing else, if we can get this library um, built, you know, and, and, and you know, once you get the authorization from the, the school district, I mean, that'd be great. For, I think for the township as well. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carrie Whitaker. I live on Carroll Road. Um, and thanks for being here for us tonight. Uh, I just have a question similar to um, what some others have asked about the senior center at the Brookline School. Um, I have young children, and one already went through the, the enrichment services with the, through FSS for K Club. I know tons of parents in this community rely on that, working parents, um, to fill in the gap for a half day for um, kindergartners. Uh, I thought it was extremely unfortunate for how long FSS seemed to have known that they would be bumped out of there before they alerted parents. I think that's extremely irresponsible to say the least. Um, and I think a lot of parents felt blindsided by that. Uh, my question to you is, is there any, because they've been hard to get answers out of, um, is there any plan for them to, do they have space? Are they going to try to find space? Are they dissolving entirely? Because part of it was, it was a consolidated effort between FSS and the district so that, you know, my son would be like taken by bus and dropped off there. And then the, all of that stuff was a great coordinated effort with the schools. What's going to happen there? This is a big concern. So um, I can update you as to what we, we know. Um, I would just start off by saying that um, I certainly don't speak on behalf of the school district or FSS as a private entity. Sure. Um, and I think that was part of sort of the conundrum that faced everybody in January when FSS released that letter. Um, so all the after school and before school programs that currently exist at the elementary schools will continue at those facilities. Um, the summer camp that they uh, had originally canceled in the January letter, my understanding is that they had worked with the school district and there is space for that, to, so the summer camp will remain open. As for uh, the actual enrichment program, the, the last I heard is that they were still looking for space uh, and they had not been able to acquire uh, and that the, the, the latest um, location had fallen through. Um, there are, so parents know, I mean, there are, the school district has passed out a list of secular uh, facilities, such as the Y, such as Cambridge School, such as um, Montgomery Early Learning Center that are now offering um, kindergarten enrichment for Hereford Township students. And the busing policy will remain the same. So for instance, if you, you live in Eighth Ward, right? Yes. So if your kid goes to Chatham Park um, and whatever enrichment program they want to go to, uh, that if it exists within that Eighth Ward, 
um, they can be bused and dropped off to and from. The busing will take place from all five elementary schools to the Y, given the number of spots and students that they'll have signed up for that, that they, they, they work that out with the school district. And then I think any other facility, um, if it fits within that busing policy, so if with, you're in the catch, catchment area for Chestnut Walled or Cooperstown and that's where you wanna get dropped off, you can be bused. Um, other facilities, it depends on the numbers and what they can work out with the school district in terms of whether you can get a bus to and from. I know that there are at least uh, two uh, of the entities that have sort of come forward into the marketplace to offer this kindergarten enrichment program um, that will be running their own private vans. So as part of the fee that the parents will pay for the enrichment, they'll pick up the kids at whatever school they're at and take them to and from. So it, it, was, it was very unfortunate how it was handled. Um, you know, we share in the frustration and, and we as a board have sort of seen that situation uh, and tried to see what we can do moving forward. And some of it is we need to look at uh, the areas within our township uh, that are zoned properly to off to, to a, a private entity that could offer that type of service. Um, and that's something that we're gonna look at in the next year. Um, but for now, you know, the, 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 the immediate concern, I think, understandably for many parents, I you know, had the same fear myself, was that there was gonna be no process and there's now more slots for that kindergarten enrichment than there were at FSS from these facilities in, in secular, in addition to any of the other um, entities that were already offering that service. So there shouldn't be a kid that has nowhere to go. That answer. Hi, I'm Jamie Pagoni. I'm a relatively new resident to Powder Mill Lane, so I was sharing much of the concern over the paving and the, the parking situations. So thank you for answering the question about Karakung, but Forgive me for the zealousness of this question, but it's starting to get warmer. And one of the things that I love about Karakung are the Sundays that it's shut down. So I would just love to hear what the plan is. Is it still gonna be shut down on Sundays or is that gonna be open now? Um, it's, this year it's, it needs to be open um, because it's a, a, it will close um, the um, a one day, um, we, the um, historically heritage, heritage uh, fest um, in June, but otherwise it's gotta stay open. And um, next year, um, we'll be back. I'm Patrick Hagan, I live in the third ward. Uh, it's my understanding, uh, based on information that I discovered online, uh, that back in 2012, there was a discussion at the uh, commissioner's meeting about the possibility of uh, modifying the curb replacement ordinance in the township uh, by creating a fund uh, based on, on uh, use and occupancy permit fees that would uh, shift the, the uh, burden for curb replacement from the homeowner to the township. Uh, I believe the, the topic was tabled and I was wondering whether that was ever revisited and if so, what the outcome might have been. Uh there, there has there has not been a revisiting of the curb issue um, since I've been on the board for the last three years. Um, but my understanding is that it may be brought up next month at the work session, um, but it would not be, what is being proposed would not be um, in terms of shifting it from, um, from uh, the property owner to a use and occupancy permit um, to be done. Just so everyone knows, it, when, when, you, when you sell your house, essentially uh, codes will go out and there's a requirement that the curbs be four inches. Um, so in order to sell the house, if, if the curbs are not four inches, you need to replace them before you, before you exit the township. Um, so as of now, that, that maintains with the homeowner or the, the homeowner who is soon to be not the homeowner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me just explain though. What we, because well, I've lived through the history of curbs, not as long as Joe, um, but the curbs we've debated, we've actually, I think, amended the ordinance three times, or this will be the third time I've lost track and I chair the ordinance <coughs> committee. We are looking again at the height issue. When we had prior discussions, which I guess you were fortunate not to have been there for, um, the, that the issue did come up. There was, a, there was virtually no support on the board for that proposal because of the increased cost it would place on the township. 
Um, that said, <coughs> once we discuss, we will discuss at our work session a proposed revision. The public's welcome to attend the work session. Your comments, I understand, I hear them from others. You should really come to our scheduled meeting. You can comment on any item on the agenda. Um, make your feelings known um, because part of what we do is listen to the residents. Uh, but the curb issue has been debated extensively and now we're looking again at a height issue again because of discussions the codes departments had and our engineers have had with them that came back through the ordinance committee and are again percolating to the board. Yeah, and just, just he has a he has a follow up. But at, while he's before he asks the follow up, just the 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 concept behind it is, is sort of twofold. It's one to attempt to remedy um, sort of an appearance issue where you have curbs that are not uniform throughout the township, and um, you know that takes time rather than just opposing a unilateral everybody has to fix their curb, which would be impractical. Um, and two, it also as I know people in the third ward have experienced and certainly people in the eighth ward have experienced, you know, it, it, it assists with stormwater management. It's the, the, if you have a four, four inch curb, um, that water doesn't spill over onto your, you know, it doesn't spill over onto the dog park area or dog walk area. Um, so, so there is rationale behind. It. Um, it's, you know, it's an expense that whether we do it, as Mr. Hagan said, in terms of a you cannot use an occupancy rate, or we do it in terms of when someone's selling their house, it's it's going to be an expense somewhere. Um, I'd just like to make one other observation. I've, I've lived in the township since 1978. Presumably, when we, when we moved in there, the curbs met the code. I'm guessing right now they do not meet the code, and we haven't done anything to the curbs. The street has been milled and repaved, and in that process, the the curbs have gotten shorter. Right. That's not our fault. I, I and, and I've had this discussion with, with many residents, and I, I certainly understand that frustration. Um, as, it, as it stands now, when we mill and replace a, code, a curb, um, we videotape each curb, and we assure that when the, when it, when the curb is done, when the pave is done, if, if the curb was two inches high, that it's two inches high when, when we're done. Um, I can't speak to what happened 15, 20 years ago, and um, that that also applies. So there's there's Pico is doing the the pipe main replacement on Cedarbrook uh, Avenue down by um, Merwood right now. You know that, that we have asked, requested of Aqua and Pico that when they do the curbs, that given the complaints, that they videotape the curbs in advance. So I I don't doubt that that happened um, in the past. Uh, all I can say is that we've taken steps to assure that that does not happen in the future. The curbs are videotaped. And I, had, I had two incidents or questions from residents, and the, the photographs right. that were taken it, right it, before <coughs> showed. Yeah, last I, summer yeah. I had two incidents with curbs. In one instance, uh, the resident was just trying to get the curb replaced, and we didn't replace it. The other one, our truck did hit it, and we replaced the entire curb. So, so when there is that, that, that error, uh, the township will, will fix the, yeah. the curb. But we're not fixing it if it's not something we did. I'm going to. Joe? Again, we are, are looking at that for the next meeting. We're going to discuss it prior in the, to the work session. Um, we're going to throw out a couple different scenarios, and then the commissioners will decide which scenario is best for the residents, and then we will uh, bring it up at the next meeting. Bob Paul, I... Bob Hall, 8th Ward. I live on the corner of Powder Mill and Powder Mill. Boy, oh boy. Uh, I agree with this gentleman over here. I lived, uh, I, used to, uh, I moved in around the middle of, in the 70s. Powder Mill from Haverford down to the corner. Okay, my section was, was not shaved. Oh, God. Was not shaved or milled. It was uh, covered three times. Certain sections are four inches. Once, a couple of sections are one inch from the top. And I have to pay for that if I want to sell my house to get a new curb put in. <laughs> I mean, they have to take a survey on this. I mean, they did not shave it or mill it. They just keep on covering it over white. We have a severe water damage coming from the top coming down. And the down where my house is, it's a ripple. 
and someone in the neighborhood called the township and they, uh, they <laughs> covered it again. I mean, it was never shaved or milled, whatever it is. But some sections are four inches, some sections are one inch from the top, you know, of asphalt. I think it's not fair we have to pay for a new curb if they don't know how to shave or do their job properly. Presently, the curb ordinance does read four inches, so when the house is sold, it has to be four inches. But all streets now have to be milled before they are repaved. Okay, well, mine wasn't milled three times. It was just covered over three times since I've been living there. <clears throat> right, that, that's, that's that? in the past. In the last nine years, they've been all milled and... Before we take any more questions, I do want to explain what this drawing is and explain what the board um, has been doing. So you hear something shifting, it again, traffic related. Um, but for those who are not aware, um, there is a large development being uh, built on the marble side of the Blue Route on the south side of the Blue Route. That development will include a 70,000 square foot giant, a Royal Farms gas station, a 40,000 square foot LA Fitness, another 40,000 square foot something, a bank, uh, the Fairfield Inn is already there, and behind it will be a large housing development that will add up to 1,400 cars an hour according to their traffic engineers on peak hours in the weekends to Lawrence Road, and Westchester Pike, just on the marble side. Wow. After, <laughs> and we don't really have a problem there with traffic anyway at the Blue Route, as you know. Um, but as a result of learning about that, Commissioner D'Amelio and I brought it back to the board, and we and the township and our engineers and the police and all different township officials have been meeting with PennDOT all of our elected officials, our state senator, our state representatives, um, and we, have, we are at a point now where there is a plan in place to rebuild the area of Westchester Pike that leads onto the Blue Route from the Haverford side. Um, what this will do, and this is the drawing of the plans from our township engineer, because although this is a PennDOT project, we are taking the lead on the cost of engineering because otherwise we don't know if it'll get done and we think it's money well spent from our tax money. That what, what it will do is from Lawrence Road on the Haverford side, which is the feeder road to the fourth ward and then to everywhere else in the township, there will be a dedicated, just past the <laughs> intersection, a dedicated lane with a concrete barrier that will allow traffic to flow directly onto the northbound Blue Route without having to stop at the traffic light. Traffic coming from Lawrence Road and anyone who does not get into that lane will have a new on-ramp where the traffic light is further up. Um, this, will, this is not a final way of resolving it but this is what's been called the short-term improvement because the long-term improvement is widening, widening the bridge over the, uh, at the Blue Route and that's a $20 million expense. Where we are with this is that PennDOT is in agreement with this plan. We need $3 million in funding in the next state budget which gets approved and goes into effect in July. According to PennDOT and at the last meeting we had, I don't know, about three weeks ago, um, if that's approved, it will then PennDOT will immediately put it out for bid. It is a six-month process for the bid and about a year of construction. Everyone involved, the PennDOT engineers, I mean, we, we filled this, the other meeting room I'm behind you with all the different people. Every person with a stake in this, Delaware County Planning, PennDOT, uh, uh, elected officials from ARPA were there. And we need $3 million out of the state budget allocated to this to move this project along. So that's where we are in terms of this uh, right now. And if it's done and accomplished, it's not going to eliminate the problem. But by allowing the free flow of traffic, it will relieve 
a significant part of the congestion, and this project has nothing to do with and is independent of the construction in Marple, which is out of our control, and we didn't really know much about it until. So I just wanted to give people an update. Uh, we've put together this the photograph of it. I don't know if anyone has any comments. Is, is, quick question, is yes. Lawrence Road getting widened? The question is, is Lawrence Road getting widened? No. And no, and that's... And if you're on, I mean, the, the congestion, Lawrence Road and Westchester Pike, so a person coming from the fourth ward toward Westchester Pike, you're on Lawrence and you want to go up Lawrence Road to Lawrence Park, you still stop at the, there's no difference. You're yep. Stop at the yeah. Place. But according to the engineers and the traffic engineers, Cars that want to go will still have their same pattern. All of those lanes will continue. It's they're essentially shifting it so that it's a dedicated lane without the traffic light. And the traffic light from the Marple part of Lawrence is what is really sort of holding up all of the traffic, which backs up all the way to Manoa Shopping Center to Linwood School. Um, my house is three blocks off of Westchester Pike. I don't even attempt to go that way on a normal business day if I have to head in certain places, I'll cut through the back ways um, up Darby Road. Um, but everyone agrees, and PennDOT apparently has ha had this plan for years and told us, yeah, but you had to get it funded. So now we do have, you know, all of our state elected officials are working to get this done. They have been for a couple of years, um, but we are close, we hope. It's now, you know, three million in the state budget is, is nothing in our state budget. So. That's the next step, and the governor basically has to put it in. But la last year before the elections, there were letters sent from all of the then elected officials. There have been changes. That's part of why we brought the meeting here again for all of the stakeholders. Everyone is on board. Are there questions? I don't know. Okay. So you, if, Rachel, then you. If you're coming down Lawrence, you would like to make a right onto Westchester Pike but not get on the blue route. You'll you're not. You're, you're going to be in the same lane for the people turning left and the people turning right. Now, if you turn, so you'll... the far right lane where they're going to get to Pete Park. Correct. You'll be able to turn and still go, but there'll be a concrete barricade which will prevent cars that are coming down Westchester Pike from suddenly shifting in, but they'll have their opportunity to get on just at the next light, which doesn't exist now, even though cars <laughs> do it. Yeah, you know, they do it even though... And, and it's almost impossible for the police to enforce there because the last thing you want is a police car with flashing lights at that intersection at rush hour. And <clears throat> actually, once you get onto the bridge, it's not our jurisdiction, it's Marble Township. Well, to answer his question, <coughs> uh, my name's Peter Lunny. Um, to answer his question, without widening that road, it's not gonna work because the car that comes there and wants to continue up Westchester Pike is gonna stop at the red light because they can't make that right hand turn. So you're There's just no turn on right anyway. There. There's never been no, but 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 you just said that everyone who wants to go directly to Blue Route doesn't have to stop. They keep right on. No, going. The, no. he's talking about the second Lawrence Road. The second, the second, the Lawrence, second Lawrence, Lawrence Road. You don't have to stop at a traffic Here's light. Here's Lawrence Road. The cars will turn and either stay in the right lane for the Blue Route or move into the next lane as they do now. And right past there is a concrete barrier, right about in the middle of Waterview Apartments, and. Once that barrier is there, you are on the blue route, uh, and if the, you go to the left of the barrier, just as if you shift, it's the same thing. And all the engineers believe it's a, it will relieve a lot of the stress. And I, I have to rely on them. Other questions? Over here. Sir. Uh, Peter, Peter Patton, we live on Grove Place. Uh, I've, I've heard a lot about traffic here today. I wondered, can anyone comment on the long range plans of the township to assist in people getting out of cars and, and limiting car use in the township, either through encouraging use of Uber or other initiatives such as bicycle lanes uh, and the like. And then a related comment is uh, the first thing I noticed about the PennDOT work was that 
trees alongside Manoa Road had been cut, does PennDOT have an obligation to basically mitigate the damage that they cause to uh, the township's environment? On the first one, we're in the process of um, updating our municipal plan, um, which is a process that will go on for about the next year, 15 months, um, and look at, I mean, part of that is looking at transportation, what, what are the issues? Um, so I, that would be a big part of it, you know, a determination of if there are ways. One of the biggest complaints I get is there's too many cars, there's too much traffic, the cars are going too fast, so we need to look at alternatives. Um, one of the things we requested, we gave a proposal to PennDOT when they do, do repave Darby Road, is that they put in bike lanes. So we're trying to encourage that as roads are repaved, we're trying to get uh, and they make it easier for people to get on bikes and get around that way. Um, the second, I'm not sure, um, either of you know, uh, do they need to replace the I trees? Do, I do not know. I know they're supposed to take utmost care with the trees. And as you, I know it happens in the neighborhoods, people complain about uh, their version of utmost care with the trees. But, um, yeah. yes. but it's, it's <laughs> Pico, not Penda. Yeah. It's all Pico. Yeah. It is not PennDOT. You can blame PennDOT for a lot of things, but when it's trees, it's, 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 it's PennDOT. This is it PennDOT. Is? It oh. may be for part of the reconfiguration of the roadway. Oh. The roadway is being reconfigured there, um, so it may be part of I, I don't know where the trees were taken down, but my assumption is it's part of reconfiguration of the intersections. Yeah, it's right out the bridge. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so it would, it would be for the reconfiguration. Yeah, Right. I live on um, Powder Mill. I live on Powder Mill Lane, right near Manoa, and I'm trying to understand exactly what section of Manoa is going to be closed during the bridge work. If you go out your driveway or go out your street and make a right. Right there. But so I can make the left out of there. You can make a left out of there, yes. Okay. And how about pedestrian traffic? Is there going to be people are going to be able to walk over to the train station from here? Yes, we'll be able to walk over to the train station. Ugh. So then people will be parking. More people will be, will be parking on our street. Okay. Hi. Thanks for all the information on this. This is what we've wanted. We were told we would learn several weeks beforehand before work started, and we knew work started when we woke up to the chainsaws. And we're wondering if you can work with um, PennDOT to have documents on either the detour maps and a schedule put on the website or something so we have better um, communication. And secondly, I second all the worries about trees and open space. I'm glad you're thinking of the old power station. But unless Beechwood becomes an express stop, I don't know how much it's going to relieve um, demand but, for Penfield. And when the Beechwood parking lot came in, we were told that was temporary. It's clearly not temporary. And I know parking is an issue, but I don't want to see Karakung Park be nibbled away by supposedly temporary parking that becomes permanent. Thank you for all your sure. concern. There is, I mean, just to, to you're right, uh, Penfield's the express stop, Beachwood isn't, but the parking on Kathmere, Strathmere, Edgewood, those streets are filled, so it, it, and on the other side, um, going up Beechwood, th there's cars. So we want to try to relieve some of that stress. So it, it, is a, it is a station that's used a great deal. I'd just like to revisit for a second the uh, traffic situation. Coming down Manoa from Lower Marion, uh, you're going to block it off at Halford Road, or you're going to put signs, somebody's going to put signs up. We do, yes, we don't put the signs up. PennDOT is res Whatever. responsible for them. But my concern is that, and you say that after a few weeks or thereabouts, it usually resolves itself, and I agree with that. However, 
coming down Manoa, they're going to come down and they're going to come to Farwood Road, which is the only clear path to Township Line, and they're going to be using that. And then someone's going to say, well, I don't want to wait at City, at City Line Avenue in Haverford, and I'm going to just do this and bypass all this, and it's going to be a recurring problem. We have a lot of young kids on our street. Young, our neighborhood's gotten young real quick, and I'm concerned that we're going to have a lot of traffic down there all the time. Is, do you give it any thought to what you could do in the future, or maybe right now at the beginning? Uh, in the beginning, we'll be, uh, as I um, said earlier, we will be out there increasing enforcement. I, I can guarantee that. Um, as in restricting movement on the street, we cannot do that. If we restrict any movement, that means no one will be allowed. If, you, if you're thinking like a do not enter or no, no left turn or anything, that, that prohibits everyone from going down the street. I just put so. another detour sign there saying that this is part of the bridge closure and the local residents only. They they usually, on the, detour, on the detour signs, they usually say local traffic only. The, at Howford Road. And probably further down. They usually give enough warning till it gets to the actual closure. All right, because the only, like I say, our street is the only one that goes straight across from Manoa to Howford. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hi, my name is John Woodman. I'm in the 8th Ward, and I was wondering if you could uh, provide any insight or if anybody has any insight into how, it's my understanding that Ardmore Avenue Bridge and the Manoa Road Bridge will be being done at the same time. So how was that decision made? Because it would make sense to me that if you have 6,400 cars that have to go somewhere, they're not all going to go to Township Line. After the first day, they're going to look at a map and say, Eagle Road looks good, and then Ardmore <coughs> Avenue is closed, and there's a ton of cars, probably at least 6,400 going down that. So how was it ever decided to do both? You, you obviously don't work for PennDOT. Right. <laughs> it wasn't, they just don't look at a map? I mean, some, some of the actual issues yeah. with these roadways, these are, um, for the Armour Avenue bridge, we actually just this past week discovered a hole in that bridge where you can look down and see the septic track. So they're both in critical need to be replaced. And, and um, they had put off Armour Avenue as long as they possibly could, but now it's, it's to a critical point where it's either they start now or it's gonna be closed and they'll start later. So they're both, both these structures are in, in dire need to be replaced for safety purposes. And, and I mean, I, I, I hear your concern, um, obviously having two bridges going the same parallel way. Um, but they are on the other side of town, and the, the Ardmore Avenue Bridge is actually not directing people to Eagle. It's the detours are going to direct people to college. It's going to be just the same detours, college, and reverse. Um, now, that's not to say that some people aren't going to go to Eagle. <laughs> I mean, obviously, that's going to happen. Um, but there shouldn't be, um, there's not expected that there be that much. It, it's going to cause traffic, mm -hmm. no doubt. Um, but it, it shouldn't be because both bridges are under construction. And, and I would just say, I mean, I, I, I get off that Route 100 at Ardmore Avenue every once in a while. Um, if anybody is upset, the, the reality is we'd be having a meeting because a car fell to the tracks when, at, at some point, and I, I don't want to do that meeting. So I'm, I'm you know, we, we're, we're encouraging PennDOT to move forward. And, and one of the things with this project, Manila Road, hopefully the, the completion date is in the area of October. So it's not gonna be that, it's gonna be during the summer and then Manoa Road will be back open just like it was before. And then Armour Avenue will be, still be working on. They're giving us assurances. Um, the problem with the College Avenue Bridge was accepted right away in doing work. They have assured us that they worked out all those issues for the Armour Avenue Bridge and there will not be the same issues there. So it will be probably about um, a little over a year uh, they're they're yeah, saying well, ele they're saying eleven to thirteen months. Yeah. So, Ronnie Luke Heatherwood Road. When they did the College Avenue Bridge, they added an extra stop sign on that little piece of Cooper Town and College, and that once people remember to stop for it, that really did help the three-way stop sign slowing it down. Adding temporary stop signs around is that another option or another possibility? I mean, not just for College, but when we're talking about the traffic. You know, I know people actually have to stop for them, but that, that did seem to help in that little piece. On the, um, I can answer with the College Avenue. The reason why the one was put up on College Avenue is because of the, um, there are some line of sight issues there. Um, we've petitioned the state numerous times for a stop sign up there. 
They've turned us down every single time. Um, How about another temporary, during, please? Um, during construction, they are going to put that one back up on college. Okay. Um, they told us they're going to, um, but once it's done, they end up taking it back down. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not going to beat you guys to death about the roads in Haverford Township. You're all aware of it. Eagle Road is, is a pet peeve of mine. I'll let that go. Again, let me go back to the veterans thing. No signs. Lower them, please. So people can read them, know what they say, what they're all about. Better yet, make another set of the signs and put them at one of the, the township parks, maybe out front here. And the last word I'll say is, go Nova. Uh, hi, I'm Mark Wilson. I'm at 903 Powder Mill Lane in uh, 8th Ward. Uh, I just noticed that in the, the timetable that came out February 25th from SEPTA that uh, all the trains from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. Uh, both stop at, uh, at uh, Beachwood Brookline and Penfield. So, so that's good news. Um, so just to confirm, there's going to be a pedestrian walkway, or are we talking about just have, being able to walk around Old Noah to get from Powder Mill to to Penfield Station? Well, they uh, penned out assured us, and also the the construction company said there will be um, a walkway going to and okay. from. Okay. So the people who live on uh, the Powder Mill side will be over get over to the uh, P and W side. Okay. Without walking around. Yeah, without okay. walking all the way around. Okay. All the way yeah. Of course, I... No, I believe that, yeah, they're, they'll build a, a temporary structure to get across. Okay. There, from my understanding, but we'll... All right, that's great. <laughs> yeah, right, a road bridge. Um, yeah, I'll get your Boy Scouts out there, right? Um, so, one, one more thing. There, I know the, the flashing stop sign you put in on, on Powder Mill, I think that's been helpful. Are there other ways of doing that without like flashing lights? Um, I mean, I, I get it. It does make you pay attention. It's a little bit like living on Times Square. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. Are there other ways of doing that? What we do is we end up putting those stop signs out there for a temporary measure. And then after we end up taking those flashing stop signs down, we go out and increase enforcement. It's like a fair warning. If, you know, we'll put that sign out there and show you that Pay attention to the sign, and then once it comes back down, um, we en end up going out and doing enforcement. Anyone? Oh. Anyone? Okay. <laughs> I was going to talk to the cop. I just want to make sure that with the, with the police patrol. Uh, for people speeding, especially up Powder Mill Lane, that it's going to be that you're going to be there in the evening because I think that's the biggest problem. More in the evening when people are coming back into uh, the neighborhood. Uh, we'll be there morning, afternoon, and evening. Okay, good. We'll be there all day. Um, while we're sort of winding down on questions, obviously we'll still take some more. But I, I, I just wanted to give you a couple more dates of things that are happening in the next couple months. Um, on Saturday, May 18th, 2019, uh, there's a recycling day for anything with a plug. Um, it'll be located at Delaware County Community College. Um, so things that are accepted include television, commuter, computer monitors, small appliances, air conditioners. Um, it's obviously, there'll, there'll be a line, but obviously if you have anything sitting in your basement or in your attic that you want to get rid of to recycle appropriately. Um, this past year, uh, based in large part on Commissioner Siegel, and I'll give him uh, the large majority of the credit for it, we, we budgeted to have uh, several shredding events in, sponsored by the township for township residents in the next year. Uh, the first of those shred events will take place at, at this building um, on April 27th. On Saturday, it's 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Um, 
so we, we budgeted to have three or four of those events over the course of the year, and, and this will be the first one. Um, at the Oakmont Firehouse on April 27th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m., there's a rabies vaccination for anybody with an animal uh, in town. It's a charge of $5 per animal. We certainly encourage anybody who uh, needs to get their pet vaccinated uh, to do so at that time. And I had one more date here that I wanted to give. Oh, the, um, the Haverford Home and Garden Show, it's the second annual Home and Garden Show, takes place at the CREC on May 19th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, and the preview night is the night before, May 18th from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, they did a great job of that last year, uh, brought a lot of vendors to town in hopes of uh, the warmer weather in spring. So if you can make it over to the Creck at that time, um, it'd be great. Yeah, one. And just to repeat, the, the Ardmore Avenue Bridge will have PennDOT officials and the contractors here who will be working on it is April 10th in this building, April 10th at 7 o'clock. And one thing I want to bring up, uh, and we've, we've tried to communicate this as much as we can. You should have all received by now a letter uh, from Tyler Technologies that also has the county logo <laughs> on it. Um, although it doesn't necessarily look like it, it is an official letter. Um, and it's an important letter for you to read because it gives you the information about what Tyler Technologies, which is performing countywide reassessment for Delaware County has determined are essentially the features of your home. If there are mistakes, you need to send that back and follow the instructions on the letter. If it's accurate, you don't have to do anything. This is not a township project. Unfortunately, we can't assist you in terms of anything with the letter, but you really do need to read it, and if it's if there are any inaccuracies, you want to return it. After this, once they have completed their work throughout the county, everyone will receive a notification with your new assessment. The assessment itself won't, you won't know from the assessment, however, whether your taxes are going to go up or down because it is based on what will happen township-wide. Uh, it's reasonable to assume that probably half the properties may see an increase and half will probably will have a decrease. Um, that's what typically happens with this, um, but you have to wait and see, and then there'll be steps if you wish to challenge it. Um, this assessment is based on a court order issued by Delaware County Judge in 2017, uh, and it's an important Thing to pay attention to. The other thing I will tell you is do not pay attention to online websites that are purport to give real estate information. They are giving some of them significantly inaccurate information. There is one website that is reporting that all the taxes in the township are going up by 700%. I've seen it. A resident contacted me and said, what in the world is this? It's wrong. Don't rely on anything but the notices from the town, from the county and Tyler Technologies. They're the only ones that are accurate. The internet is not accurate. <laughs> In regard to that, um, the Tyler Technologies, are they using current market sale prices? Like in the most recent township newsletter, you went ward by ward and said what the average sale price was and how many homes sold. Is that information that Tyler's going to use? To raise our assessment? <laughs> I'll let you. <laughs> They're not going to use that information. Um, what, what they are exactly using, um, I, I would refer you to Delaware County Council and you can ask them because it's, it's honestly, we, we, we get as much information as you are. We're just, there's been people who got the letter from Tyler and they contact us at the township or contact our commissioner to say, is this legitimate or not? And we can tell you that it, it is legitimate, but there is, um, uh, um, I, uh, I, I posted on, on my Facebook page and I can pull it up here in a second when somebody asks us a question, but there's, there's, a, there's a phone number that they give at the county for inquiries and stuff like that, and I encourage anybody uh, to contact there, because I, honestly, I just don't know. And there may be people from Tyler coming around to homes. They're not to come in homes. They We'll look at the property from outside, but if anybody comes to the door and 
wants to come in, they're not from Tyler. And if they do ask, call the police. That's. They do knock on your door, though. They tell you they're there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, just briefly, um, in terms of calling the police, I just wanted to, for any third ward residents, um, uh, the deputy chief was going to give an update on, uh, we unfortunately had an incident at the Town Tap restaurant a couple months ago, um, and I asked him if he could just provide an update on where that investigation is. Um, if you're not familiar with Town Tap, uh, back in January, there was a robbery that occurred there. Um, it, Close to closing time, our detectives, along with um, Philadelphia Police, Upper Darby Police, Lower Marion Police, and the FBI, have been working closely on this. Um, we do have suspects identified. This was not a random robbery. Um, just you know, so you're aware, I, I can't name the suspects, but um, we're in the process of securing, poss possibly getting warrants for them. Um, we believe they know we're on to them because we have. Uh, taking certain actions, um, such as search warrants and related things. So we were very close to a successful conclusion of making an arrest in that robbery. The only other uh, update I have to give you, um, the good news is um, most of our crime is down here in Hafford Township. If you've recently seen, there's been some things posted on there. We're the second safest in Pennsylvania, according to UCR reports. The only um, crime that is currently up is theft from autos. The chief comes up every month at the commissioner's meeting and he talks about um, how many car th uh, thefts from cars um, are occurring in the town. They're going down the street, they're pulling on door handles and seeing what cars are left open. If they're lucky enough to find a key fob, believe it or not, people leave their key fobs in that car, that car is also going along with any contents in that car. The way we can combat this if we all work together i'm a resident of Hereford township is to make sure you lock your car doors at night you're going to pull on your handle and walk down the street to the next car and pull on that handle um, my neighborhood is not immune to it i drive an unmarked police vehicle and um, right down the street two houses down my neighbor didn't lock their door uh, car door they took her purse and the contents of the purse so when before going to bed at night Take that extra second, make sure you have your key fob is the most important thing, because if you don't have your key fob, then you start that car if it's left in there and it'll be gone. And secondly, just lock your doors. It'll, it'll prevent you from being a victim. That's the most important thing. So, that's all I have with their crime update. I, I wanna make one comment um, that for those who don't know, um, we are in a period of transition in the township um, at the end of the month. Uh, both the Director of Public Works, Richard Doherty, and our Township Manager, Larry Gentili, are both retiring after many, many years of excellent service to this township. And they will be missed. Um, they have done an exceptional job. I think we have the best you know, services in terms of trash, snow, recycling, removal, um, that you will find anywhere. Uh, and that's because of their leadership uh, and the board has, the board of commissioners has, we have extended an offer to someone as a new township manager. Once due diligence is done, we anticipate his appointment in the next month or so. Um, until then, we are in the very capable hands of Amy Cuthbertson, our assistant township manager and finance director who I believe is almost single-handedly responsible for the improvements in our bond ratings and everything else <laughs> and makes our life look great when we have to borrow money and do things because our credit rating has improved. And for that, I thank you. Uh, but, you know, it's a time of transition. Larry's been here a long time. Doc has been here a long time. But that also means opportunities for new, new voices, new visions. Um, and I think some of that can be very good in sense of, you know, it's, there's always change. No one is forever. And, you know, we will miss Larry. We will miss Doc greatly. Uh, but uh, rest assured, we're doing our best to make sure that we put the township in continually, continuing hands that are as capable as theirs. Anything else? Um. So that real estate, if you want to, that real estate, that that 
website is delco real estate dot co d o dot delaware dot p a dot u s rolls off the tongue. <laughs> so, but if you go to delco, if you go to delco p a dot gov and search for reassessment, um, it'll come up and it has an information page. I just scanned the, the question and answer page and it, essentially there seems to be some mathematical formula where they, they calculate the fair market value of your home <coughs> and then they have a review process where somebody actually physically looks at that in a comparable house um, and then you would get that reassessment and you obviously have the right to appeal. Thank you all for coming tonight. It's great to have this citizen involvement. Thank you.